Hey, what's going on everybody? We have the meta snapshot for patch 13.4 and lots of changes because there's a pretty big patch notes if you guys checked it out earlier this week, but pretty much AP is a lot better than AD now. Before we were all playing Samira, now we're gonna be playing AP comp. So let's just go over a quick rundown. So I think the best comp by far, and I kind of thought this when I read the patch notes was Yumi is going to be the best because she got untouched and everyone else got nerfed. So it makes a lot of sense that she's really strong and they buffed a bunch of her augments as well and like Malphite got buffed too. So in the S tier, Yumi's definitely like top dog, I would say. Misfortune also super strong right now. Pretty much once AP paths become more viable and you start with a tier, Anma MF comps love tiers because they have many uses for them. Spellslinger Talia, no surprise there. Uh, she got buffed up a bunch and Spellslingers again, when tiers back in the meta, they're just gonna be slightly stronger. Samira's still good. Uh, she's just not as good as before. It's still definitely playable. Maybe we'd bump it down later on. But right now, there's always an overreaction at the start of the patch. So sometimes, like, no one plays this comp anymore, and then it becomes magically good because you're not contested anymore. There's a lot of give and take in TFT, and there's some parts of, like, game theory or whatever you want to call it that kind of contribute to the metas as well. Uh, Kaisa Recon still very solid, even though it got a slight nerf. Threats solid as well. LeBlanc reroll, I think this is like one of the more emerging comps right now. That's a little rarer. Same with Zoe reroll. I'm pretty sure Zoe and LeBlanc are both really, really strong because they lead into other things as well. So keep that in mind. You don't have to play them in your final comp. You could just play them in the mid game and then move on. Oxforce Viego, pretty solid build. Diego's doing slightly better right now. Oxforce is pretty weak against Samira comps, and since there are less Samira comps, that's why it gets bumped up a little bit, because single target damage is pretty good against them. Uh, onto the A tier, Duelist, Super Draven, Soraka, Jax, Vertical, Star Guardian, all very solid. I think Soraka will get a little stronger. It depends, again, how contested tiers are, because blue buff on her is just amazing. Laser Core got bumped down a bunch because some of the augments got removed or nerfed, and this was a pretty augment-reliant comp. Uh, Renekton reroll still good. Gangplank with Flaming Ricochet still good. Vi Ezreal reroll is also good if you get the augments for them. MF Mech okay. Camille reroll decent. Sure Shot reroll very situational, but it can work. For Ace Mech, Talon and Anima Jinx are going to round out the A tier. B tier is pretty much the same as last week. It's just a bunch of the reroll comps. They're just slightly weaker than everything else right now. Uh, but let's get into how to play each and every one of the comps. Before we get into that, let me address the elephant in the room. Some people, they like the new setup, some people they don't. And that's okay right now. What I can promise you though, is that this will improve gradually over time. For those of you who have actually used the website already, you may already have seen some improvements. For example, when I click the comp, we added names to the champion for more clarity, we added item recipes, and you could add stuff to the augment selection now. So we will be updating the screenshots over time. I know there's been other feedback as well, such as wanting to know how many traits you have active on the left, but all that, it's all work in progress, but just bear with me. It will improve and it will be exactly everything you want. Like another thing that we changed was we made the colors of these hexes less uh, bright, so it's not as sharp on the eyes as well. But the site's gonna be super updated. We'll eventually replace all the screenshots slowly but surely, but I felt like that should be addressed before we get into the actual meta snapshot, because um, at the end of the day, I want it to be very usable for everyone, players of all levels. I'll be working with someone on that to get this um, in tip top shape. We have a lot of cool features such as like right clicking an item and making it core so it kind of highlights it like that. Uh, so that's why I kind of want to move on to this site versus some of the other ones that exist right now. There's just a lot more features that you can add that are currently lacking in some sites right now. Uh, but Yumi comp, very, very solid overall. Nyla is like just such a beast. If you ever get Nyla three star, you pretty much win the game. There's very few things that can stop it. And then Yumi, she could kind of just take whatever leftover items and it's not that big of a deal. But pretty much since everything got nerfed and this comp got buffed a little bit, not by much, just a little bit, it is going to be tearing through a lot of teams right now. So the most important thing about this comp is just slow rolling at level six and just finding all the three stars at that level and then leveling up to seven and then getting Nyla three star. That's pretty much all you have to do with it. Uh, in terms of openers, you just want to have a lot of the supers units and Yumi early on. Apart from that, you don't really care too much about anything else. Like, I wouldn't just hard force the comp, you know, but in games where you have a good super start, like, just go ahead and try this out, especially if you have a usable augment at 2-1. Uh, on to the next build we have is the Misfortune Anima Squad. Uh, not too much has changed here. I like playing the Pranksters, I like playing the Brawlers to complement Riven. And then main item holder is going to be MF, secondary going to be Vayne or whoever has the Anima Squad spatula. Riven 3 is optional. Obviously you prefer to have it, but you can't make it work every time. 
And there are a lot of different versions of this board based on like what units you hit. For example, like you don't need to run fiddlesticks. You could run Urgot instead. You could run Belveth instead. You could even run like an Aesol or something like that or a Zac. You could do other stuff such as play three pranksters. You don't need Sejuani even though she's very good. And the items on most units are actually pretty flexible. The only item I think that is like super important is Spear of Shoujin on Misfortune, but there are ways around that. Like I've seen blue buff Misfortune work. It's obviously worse, but it's still playable. Like don't just be afraid to play the comp because you're missing one core item because in this set at least, like apart from Last Whisper on AD comps, uh, most units are pretty flexible in terms of items. For example, in the next comp we're about to talk about, the Talia carry, Talia can use either Shoujin or blue buff. It almost doesn't matter. I do prefer Shoujin, but there's a very little difference between them. It also depends on how many Star Guardians you play. If you're playing something like seven Star Guardian, which we'll get into later, you don't even need a mana item on Talia. So good items are always gonna depend on how your comp is actually built and what you need for your current board. Since AP is back, I feel like I should talk about Talia carry a little bit because we haven't really paid that much attention to this comp for a while. So the way I do it at least is you start off with like a Gadgetine start or something like that, or you have like Sona as an item carrier with some spell slingers up front. And then you slowly pivot into this board, but you don't have to play this exact board. The main key components of any AP comp, so this is going to be for Talia, this is going to be for the LeBlanc, this is going to be for the Zoe, this is going to be for the Sorakas, is you just need to run Alistair, Annie, Echo, Frontline. After that, whichever carry you hit first, that's the carry you're going to use. If it's Talia, you're going to play Talia. If it's Soraka, you're going to play Soraka. If you could go for LeBlanc 3, go for LeBlanc 3, things of that nature. It's kind of like when we were playing Sure Shot before and we were flexing between Belveth and Samira. It's like whichever one you hit, great. Obviously, you prefer one over the other, but uh, as long as you hit some two star four cost, you're going to be fine. But for items for Talia, pretty much any AP is going to do. The best is going to be like Jeweled Gauntlet after you have one mana item because you get a lot of AP from the Spell Slinger trait. So because of that, you don't need stuff like Hat that much or Archangel. So you'd much rather have like Jeweled Gauntlet. Guard Breaker or like a Giant Slayer, things like that. Uh, but onto the next build we have is a Sure Shot comp. This is the comp we went over and played a lot last week. Uh, it did get nerfed a bit, so that's why it is lower on the tier list because the actual Sure Shot trait got touched a bit. The one good thing about this is that there are some versions that run a lot of Aegis. So I've seen games where people play Vi, Alistair, Sejuani, Echo as their frontline, and that way you get three Aegis. Obviously, in an AP game, that's going to be a very good thing to go. Since we talked a lot about this comp in the last week, I'm going to skip over for the how to play section. But of course, you guys can always check this out on the website bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. On to the next build, we have Kaiser Recon. This comp got nerfed a little bit, but it's still going to be pretty solid. The only thing you need to really know about this comp is you just need your spells to crit. So in order to do that, you need either Jeweled Lotus, the Augment, Jeweled Gauntlet on Kaisa, or for Recon. You don't want to overlap them, just take one or the other. As for actual items, I think Static Shiv is the only required item in this build. Obviously, if you get an Ionic Spark on one of your frontline, you don't need it and you go for just like pure damage on Kaisa. And the other two items you have on her, it really could be anything. Literally just slam any damage item that you could get, anything listed over here, and you'll be doing just fine. The reason why you want to slam items is because you want to get value out of them as early as possible and that way you have more health and because you have more health you can get more gold because you can afford to collect more interest and then when you collect more interest you have more gold so you have a higher chance of hitting all your three star units so the ones you want most importantly are kaisa 3 ramus 3 and Cho'Gath 3 because the other damage units they don't really matter that much the one exception is if you get a vein augment called spread shot spread shot vein is an amazing unit and if you do get that, just build a Spear Shoujin on Vayne and then two other damage items, doesn't really matter what it is. Then you'd play the same exact way you would do before, except instead of wanting 3-star Kaisa, you want 3-star Vayne, 3-star Ramus, and 3-star Cho'Gath. The items are slightly different, so you will have to adjust to that, but overall both builds are going to work extremely well. Onto the next build we have is the Threats build. This is with either Belveth carry or a or one of the legend or one of the legendaries and then Aesil as one of your supports. So main tank, it could either be Ramus or Zac. It could even be Cho'Gath too. It really depends on your game. So if you can get like three star Cho'Gath or Ramus, definitely use them as your main tank. However, if they're gonna be all two star, use Zac. Sometimes it's a little difficult to swap the items from your Ramus to your new Zac though, because 
Uh, you don't want to just sell your two-star Ramus and have to find a new one. Belveth is going to be the main carry, and you just need Last Whisper, Healing, and then I like Titan's Resolve a lot, or Runon's, Giant Slayer, or like Edge of Knight, or something like that. Pretty much any good damage item is going to work well on her. Also keep in mind, since you are playing Threats, you could still play other traits by just removing some of the backline units or frontline units. For example, instead of playing this frontline, you could play Defenders, you could play Brawlers or something like that. Instead of the backline being Aesol, Urgot, and Belkaz, and they are good, but like you can always swap them out for other things depending on what you get items for. So if you get like really good MF items or something like that, you could just run a random MF and you'll be doing fine. Same goes for a lot of other stuff. It's like a little too hard to list all of them out because there's so many options that you could kind of do. Uh, next up we have is the LeBlanc reroll. So admin's gonna be highly admin dependent, obviously, any admin comp is. So you want either the mana or the ability power ones for LeBlanc. Another good option is the permanent HP if you could stack her early. So if you ever get a LeBlanc during the stage one random hero drops, and you check your admin and it's one of those permanent HP ones, that's the sign that you could go for a LeBlanc reroll game. A lot of people think it's only the mana or AP ones that work, but the permanent health one is extremely good on her. Also, be sure to experiment a lot with 4 admin because 4 admin got buffed a lot, so you could switch up the board as much as you like. You could take out two spell slingers such as Sona and Janna and play 4 admin instead. If you do though, I do recommend playing like a Sejuani because you'll be playing Blitzcrank or do it if you have an admin spatula. I'm not gonna lie, the other two admin units, Camille and Blitzcrank, they're kind of useless, so it is risky to run for admin, but if you have the spatula, it definitely helps out a ton. Uh, another reason why you should run for admin is because if you have like an extremely, extremely good admin, or if you want to get more gold, because sometimes you could get the gold drops from four admin, uh, you'd take that and then you use that gold to get a LeBlanc 3. But the way you play this is pretty much like all the other AP comps in the early game, like Gadgetine's going to be the strongest start almost always. And then instead of going to level 8 and trying to find Soraka 2, Talia 2, you just stay level 7 and slow roll. And you could go like LeBlanc and Zoe 3, for example, if you get enough of them. Uh, you could also do like LeBlanc and Sona 3. Choose one of them as a secondary carry, and you could also use Soraka as a secondary carry. It's just really going to depend on what you hit. Next build up we have is Zoe Reroll, so pretty similar to all the other AP comps we've looked at. This one focuses a little more on the Gadgetines and just like doing like a blue buff spam build with Morello. You don't need Morello. Morello is going to be better when she's two items, but when she's three items, you'd rather have three damage items. Hopefully that makes sense. So as a secondary carry, Zoe with blue buff Morello, extremely good. However, if she's your primary carry, you probably want like three full damage items on her. But again, it's going to be dependent on what's happening in your game because you can't always force three damage items. Another thing to keep in mind is that in the mid game, when you can only have like so many items, having the blue buff Morello is going to save you a lot of health and then adding on the third damage item later, even though it's not like best in slot in the super late game, it's still good because again, it saved you health in the mid game by slamming the Morello. But let's say you do build the Morello early on your Zoe and then you find like a fiddlesticks later, someone who could use the Morello and you have an item remover, then sure, remove the Morello on her and then put like blue buff guard breaker hex set gun blade on her if you really want in the late game. Uh, a lot of people wonder like what's best in slot? what is like needed in a game or whatever for items on a champion and it's it's always going to depend on your game there's no such thing as like a pure best in slot like you should always try to build what's best in game and that's going to change pretty much like every game it depends on what item starts you get it depends how strong your units are like if you have LeBlanc 2 star and Zoe 1 star, maybe you should focus more on your LeBlanc instead. And her item requirements are going to be a little different. And then there's a whole example before of like, oh, Morello's better in the stage 2 and stage 3 and stage 4, but maybe in stage 6 and 7, you'd rather have three damage items on Zoe. Like there's a lot of different assumptions whenever you're talking about like best items, and it's always going to be dependent on what happens in your game. Uh, next build up we have is the Oxforce Viego. This build didn't change too much. Viego did get apparently better targeting. I feel like they've been changing his targeting every single patch. He's always been very usable though. Uh, it just really depends on whether you hit him two star or not. Viego's kind of one of the more like first or eighth -y type of comps because the difference between Viego 1 and Viego 2 are pretty big. Also the difference between getting like six to eight Ox Force versus just four because you need either the Spatula or Aphelios. Pretty big assumptions there. Three and six Renegade, again, same thing. Very big differences in power. You don't always have to go Viego carry though if you do get the spatula. There are a lot of different options you could use here. 
uh, to kind of pick up the slack in terms of spatula usage and being your primary carry. Obviously, Viego is still going to be really good because he uses both traits. But if you get a spatula and you hit one of these units two star before your Viego, you could use them as your primary carry instead. Uh, Ionic Sparks is going to be very important. Hextech Gunblade really good. He just needs one healing and one magic resist reduction item. And then third item is going to be like a hat or a jeweled gauntlet. Hat's a little better. But you know, again, you just need to slam whatever items you have in your game. But pretty much any usable damage item will work. Now onto the A tier, we have Duelist. Duelist got bumped up a bit because Zed got buffed. Uh, you pretty much play it the same as before, just like the Locket Duelist build from the past. There is like a two hour gameplay guide that I made. So again, on the website, just click on, uh, like go to the top, buddymuffins.lol slash meta, and then click on Duelist. And then you have a two hour guide and like separate gameplay here if you wanna check out how that's kind of played. So this comp is like pretty straightforward. You just need a bunch of lockets and like a decent unit start. Draven reroll, this comp's a little interesting because it is gonna contest the Yumi reroll a little bit in that you both want the supers units. But sometimes, some games, there just aren't any Yumi players because it's not like that super broken. I mean, I do think it's the best comp right now. So does Void Sin. However, you still need a good spot for it and people just can't force it out of the blue. Well, I mean, they can, it's a free country, you can do whatever you want, but it's probably not optimal just to like go into a game thinking you're gonna go Yumi no matter what. So with that in mind, if the supers are free, like Draven reroll is really good. There's also other versions of Draven reroll where you reroll a bunch of the defender units such as Poppy, Wukong, and, and Rel, and you could just forget about the supers in those builds. Obviously, those builds are better when you're in an AD lobby, so it was probably better last patch to do that comp. But again, sometimes you're forced to play certain ways. Uh, next build up we have is a Soraka carry. We kind of already talked about this, but you guys can already notice this is very similar to the Talia comp that we saw before. It's pretty much the same exact thing. Like even the items are almost the same. You just pretty much switch over your carry. And again, good admins will make or break the comp also. But really just whoever you hit first, you just play them as your carry and you run the same front line and almost the same back line. Uh, next build up we have is a vertical star guardian. This is an AP comp that does look a little different than the one we talked about because this one goes around with seven star guardian. And when you have that, you're not as reliant on mana items on Talia. You could go like triple damage. You could still build the mana item obviously because you don't get to just predict what type of comp you get to play in the late game. The advantage of Vertical Star Guardian over the other comps is that it's a little cheaper because you're running like two two cost units and one one cost unit. So if you happen to get a game where you're like kind of poor, it's one option to kind of use. And it's kind of just as strong. It's not like, think of it as like a supermarket off brand of like one of your favorite snacks or something like that. It's like pretty much the same, but you know it's not exactly the same, but it gets the job done at the end of the day, at least most of the time. Uh, next build up we have is the Jax build. Jax, do you guys remember Jax from like a couple patches ago? You play it the same exact way. So we might be in a Jax Yumi meta again because a lot of people are playing these comps. Maybe we're underrating Jax. I'm not actually 100% sure because they did change the way he works a little bit. You might want to play like the three mech Jax instead of the full on eight brawler Jax because they did change a bit and buff up the mech part a little bit. But same items overall, you just really want the RFC and then any two other items will do. Obviously, like you prefer having Rage Blade, but you can't handpick that many items in a TFT game. A lot of people think you can, and it's just like a bad assumption to have. Just prioritize getting RFC and then everything else, just try to slam as early as you can. So if you could build like a Titan's Resolve on Jax after you already have the RFC, like just, just build it, you know? It's not gonna make or break your game to wait for the Rage Blade later on because you pretty much get the same output from it overall throughout the course of the game because you have the item on earlier. Some people like healing items on Jax, either the Gunblade or the Bloodthirster. I'm actually more of a fan of the triple damage item Jax rather than the healing, but it's gonna depend on what types of comps you're playing. So like some comps, they do a lot of AOE or they have like backline access, like maybe a Zed jumps to the back, starts attacking your Jax. In those cases, like obviously, yeah, healing's gonna do a lot of work. But then other games where you just really need to blow through their front line and uh, your front line's so tanky because you're running six to eight brawlers that they never reach your jacks ever. In those cases, then you'd rather just have three items on jacks and just end the fight right away. Uh, but to play this comp, you just want to slow roll on either level seven or eight. It's gonna depend if you get a brawler augment. So if you get plus one brawler, either from an emblem, trait, whatever, you'll want to go level eight and play eight brawlers. 
However, if you don't have that option, you could just stay level seven and slow roll for Jax three. Both options kind of work. It depends on your augments. Uh, next comp up we have is Laser Core Z. Pretty much the same thing as before. It got nerfed a bit, so it's not like that premiere of a comp anymore. So I wouldn't like start your game going into thinking like, hey, I'm gonna go Laser Core Z. Like, uh, that's not a good way to approach this anymore because it definitely did get nerfed because they removed one of the augments. Nine Laser Core is obviously still super, super strong. And you also have to keep in mind Zed got buffed a little bit. So what that means is it's a little stronger in the mid game, but weaker in the late game because you don't have like as much laser core stuff. And it's also just like harder to kind of play. Not harder in terms of skill harder, but harder in terms of the amount of times you could play it. Uh, next build up we have is Renekton Reroll. This just revolves around the Renekton carry augment. Reign of Anger only we have in the hero augment selection thing down here. Uh, we'll obviously add this to this picture over here eventually. Uh, but you just be patient with me on the whole like graphic type of stuff because uh, it's kind of like a work in progress. Essentially, all you do is slow roll for Renekton and Blitzcrank 3. Obviously, you really only care about Renekton, but if you have Blitz, since you're most likely re-rolling at level 5 anyways, uh, you just naturally hit a lot of Blitzcranks at the same time. But do keep in mind this comp did get nerfed, but it's still really, really strong. Uh, next comp up we have is Gangplank Supers. This is Flaming Ricochet. Again, Flaming Ricochet got nerfed, but it's still really, really good. So uh, you just play the comp the same exact way you did before. You could play it with Supers. You could play it like the same board as a Yumi comp. You could do the Duelist version you see here. Lots of different versions you could play, so you could kind of flex the other slots. But it's still really strong. If you get Flaming Ricochet and you have like even one Gangplank on your bench, uh, you could probably just force it and do really well. Um, comp after that is Ezreal Vi. This is with either the Ezreal carry or Vi carry augment. Really depends on which one you hit. Uh, both of them are really strong. So if you have the choice of getting the Ezreal augment, just make sure you have some way of getting a blue buff. If you have the Vi carry augment, just make sure you have any sort of defensive items. I've noticed that like you could pretty much build any defensive item on Vi whenever you get that augment as long as you just have them in the early game because it really just snowballs the game and you don't have to re-roll this. You could use it to tempo into other comps, uh, but obviously that's going to be a little more advanced. Uh, but you pretty much just level up to level six on stage three, two, and then roll it down, stabilize a little bit, and then slow roll at level six until you hit everything three star. Uh, next build up we have is Misfortune Mech. Misfortune again is really solid in this patch because uh, everything else got nerfed and more people are playing AP items, so if you're building AP items, it's like another out that you have. Another thing to keep in mind is that the mech is a little stronger this patch too, so most mech comps are actually pretty solid right now. You could also play this in the four ace mech build. It's pretty much the same comp except you run four aces, it's just a little harder to hit because sometimes you just don't find Mordekaiser. Uh, the comps in between those two though is one is Camille reroll, the other one is sure shot reroll. Both have their merits. Uh, you just need to make sure you hit it in the right spots like Senna reroll or Sivir reroll can both work. Camille reroll, you need a lot of copies of Camille. You want to hacker her in and you want to have a good admin for her. Like good admin for Camille in Camille reroll is like almost required. You want the ones with AD. Those are going to help you out the most, obviously. Uh, next build up we have is Talon reroll. Talon reroll, I personally like it a lot. It is a little risky because like between the time you have Talon 2 and Talon 3, there's a huge, huge difference between them. Most of the other one cost rerolls, like the two star and three star, obviously you'd prefer the three star, but there isn't like as big of a jump in power. At least I find that there isn't. And also their complimentary unit, Silas, he's like not that great to partner up with. You just take him because he's a one cost renegade. You don't take him because you like really like him or something like that. You could also just play three star Talon with the same exact board you play Viego with. So if you high roll a Talon 3, you could just build the same exact way you build your Viego later on, and you'll just have like a little less money to complete the comp. Uh, onto the next build we have is Jinx Reroll. So Jinx Reroll, it really works well in lower elos, I think. Pretty much Anima Squad in general works better in lower elo. So if you are like below Masters or something like that, like bump up all the Anima Squad comps like up like half a tier or something like that on, on the tier list. The reason why that happens is because during stage two, you get more stacks because people build worse stage two boards. And since you're playing Anima Squad anyways, like you're just running three Anima plus one other unit, it's like kind of the same skill to play the Anima Squad comp in the early game at like a lot of different levels. So that's why it's kind of better the lower you are and worse the higher up you get. It's one of my favorite comps though, because uh, it is the bunny comp and <laughs> 
<laughs> Misfortune just like Giga Smurfs a lot of fights, and you have a lot of cool augment outs such as Reverberation for Riven or like Spreadshot Vayne. And then even the Jinx carry one that we're talking about here right now is pretty solid because uh, she uses the same items as MF, so you could either use her to tempo into MF or just use her as like a 3-star carry if you're able to 3-star her. Uh, but that's going to be it for the S and A tier. B tier is just re-rolling at various stages. You can just copy the boards that you see on here, but only go for these if you have like a really good start for them. So if you have like a couple copies of the units before getting the augment, uh, that would be very ideal. Going on into the item starts, I think tier right now is the best because you just want to build blue buffs and just kind of abuse that. Belt's solid for defensive items as per usual. You could build like Redemption, you could build Sunfire Cape, Warmogs, you can build even a ZZ Rod at the start of the game. It's just super, super good. Zeke's also got buffs, so maybe you could experiment with that. Oh yeah, Tier, Tier builds so many things. It builds Redemption, Static Shiv for early game, uh, Chalice of Power got buffs. Worst case, you build like a Hand of Justice or Protector's Vow, and then like even Spear of Shojin is required in some comps for like Misfortune or like Talia. So there's just like no reason why you shouldn't be starting Tier if you can get it early on. Uh, all the other items still pretty good though. Like I don't think there's like super, super bad items. We bumped Cloak up a lot because a lot of people are playing Mech now and Cloak is just good for Mech and you can build the Chalice as well. So pretty solid choices all around. I don't think there's any item that you're like, oh, dang it, I hate having this. Uh, though I will say like Sword and Glove are probably my least favorite. Uh, but that's gonna kind of summarize this week again like with the images and stuff where it's gonna improve over time probably by like set 8.5 it'll be like everything you ever wanted so just like bear with me for now because we are obviously in the later parts of the set so i do kind of want to work on getting this perfect you know uh, but if you do have feedback just head on over into my Discord, discord.gg slash bunnymuffins. Uh, there are links in like all my stuff so you could easily find it. And then just like type in the general channel or like just any channel, just yeah, let me know if you guys have feedback on the website. Obviously there's some stuff I already know that like we went over at the start, there's like even more than that because obviously I do like read every comment and stuff. Um, but we are also going to have data in this soon. I don't know when, but it should be soon TM. Hopefully by 8.5, we have like a lot more stuff there to use. So um, definitely look out for that. And hopefully you guys have good luck in your climbs this week. I will be on vacation. So less streams in the next week or like no streams in the next week, but I'll be back the week after and we'll try to finish off the no augment challenge and hopefully just see like what rank we get because it's like pretty difficult to play if you guys have been watching that on my stream. Um, but we'll also be like doing YouTube videos of that challenge as well if you weren't able to catch the live streams but uh, that's gonna be it for me today hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i hope to see you all later hey guys thanks so much for watching don't forget to share and subscribe and of course smash that like button each like is an lp i gained before the next video